Hey guys, welcome back to S2, and we're talking knee deep about our favorite subject, strength. And of course, you can see my lovely whiteboard back there. I'm going to walk you through everything that's on there because there's no way in hell you're going to be able to read my writing. Um, what I want to do is kind of set up today's video, and I want us to take a look at strength uh, from a 10,000 foot view for, for a moment. I think a big issue that we get into with strength training are strength camps or schools of strength that are setting up program design based on their personalized concept, their ideas about what strength is. And if you look at it like that, where we are receiving information from starting strength or the Shaco system, or Westside. <laughs> we see uh, all these conflicting ideas. I believe, personally, this begins at the root base of the individual who is in charge of that program, that in, in charge of that school of strength, and what their thoughts are on the subject. For instance, Mark Ripito and starting strength. Everybody out there knows I am not a fan of Mark Ripito. I got my reasons for it. If you like him, great. Uh, I'm not a fan. If we look at Ripito's ideas of what strength is, you see every video he does, everything he publishes, it's this everything fits into this category. Strength is force production. Therefore, if we just get stronger, all things are better. I'm a better power lifter, I'm a better athlete, I'm a better soldier. All I got to do is a 5x5 five five squat, 5x5 five five deadlift, 5x5 five five bench press, and I'm stronger and therefore just better. And that is his way of solving all things. He has a very simple definition for what strength is, and therefore he has a very simple program design. Now we will all admit, and I will too, why I argue with the technical um, uh, the technical side of starting strength, their concept of a 5x5 five five system is much older than they are. They took something that had been around for many, many years and just popularized it. We all know that beginners do better with a linear strength program, a very simple system of just 5x5 five five every week add 5 pounds, 10 pounds, at some point you're going to run out of room. You're not going to be able to make those gains anymore. Now, what happens when you become intermediate and advanced? If you stay consistent with resistance training, you're going to find out the starting strength method will not work for you any longer. So, where do we go from there? If then if we look at more advanced strength programmings like the West Side or the Shaco system, you will see very clearly that these systems come from an advanced mindset. I'm not saying they're smarter than a Mark Ripito. I'm not saying their IQ is better. What I'm saying is they are thinking out of the box instead of in it or creating it. They are thinking outside of the box. They are expanding their thoughts and ideas about what strength is and defining it. Strength is a generic term like snow to an Eskimo. An Eskimo probably sees a hundred kinds of fucking snow, all right? Strength very much is a generic, general term pointing to force production. But there's more going on than that. And I just put six essential components to strength, of strength characteristics. When all of these things are put together, it equals this huge generic term called strength. So I'm going to go through these one by one. I'm going to give you ideas of how each one is represented and also how each one can be trained. So the very first one I put up here is maximal strength. Now these can be, the maximal strength can be attained 
through any number of lifts, albeit it should be an objective exercise. For instance, a press, a squat, a deadlift, a clean. I know that objectively I'm getting stronger at these lifts using maximal strength because the weight is going up. Last week I had 100 pounds, this week I have 105. Yes, I'm getting stronger. I did it by 5x5, five by five, all clean reps. Yes, check the box, I'm getting stronger. Maximal strength, think about that as, as your ability to produce force through the entirety of a set. It's an exhibition of strength. It's a mind, muscle, whole body contraction and exhibition of strength. Now, contrast that while we're here with this guy I wrote down here, which is the totality, absolute strength. Absolute strength is the term used to really point towards the genetic factor. The, the absolute potential of the muscle, the neuromuscular system, and don't forget the connective tissue ability to sustain a contracted force with 100% of your genetic ability, which most people will never get close to. It takes the absolute best strength athletes years, 20 years to get close to their total absolute strength potential. And this goes to what I have been talking about, which is that strength is not a, an accrual. It's not something that you, you, could, you get better at or, or increase by doing sets and reps and exercises. You always had. <laughs> you were always as strong as you'd ever be. It's just your body knows to not give it to you. If your body just, you could call upon your absolute strength in a deadlift and it let you do that, it would rip all the connective tissue out of your body. Absolute strength is, is pointing towards that lady out there whose car is flipped over on her children and she flips it the fuck over. We've heard of this time and time again. These superhuman feats where people are able to, because it's a life, and death can tap into this genetic factor and wow, magic happens. They've never lifted a weight in their life and all of a sudden they're deadlifting 500 pounds. It can happen. We see it all the time. I want to make that point. This will continue to increase over time the, more, the better you get at connecting the mind-muscle connection. The better you get, the longer your career in weight training eh? the better this will get, all right? The next is starting strength, the ability to overcome static resistance with dynamic force. Now, most of these definitions I've come up with on my own. I've referenced them, but I like to kind of use my own terms and put it into my own words because it helps me to think about how I would utilize these layers of strength. Starting strength, the ability to overcome static resistance with dynamic force, all right? Think pin squats or a pin bench, doing anything from the pins. So in a pin squat, I go down to the bottom of the pins, I relax for three Mississippi, I try to take the stretch reflex out, the boing, the bounce out of the hole, the, the, the static, or I'm sorry, the stretch reflex out. So I turn this movement, I turn the squat basically into a deadlift where there is no energy. I've taken the energy out of the equation I'm starting to move this weight from zero, all right? That's an idea. The deadlift, of course, is also an idea of your starting strength. This is why the deadlift should be trained in a dead lift. The, the bar should not be bouncing off the floor. The next is strength endurance. My God, I can't even begin to tell you how important this is. Your, I don't give a shit what Mark Ripito or anybody else out there says. You, your strength, longevity, your career, your ability to ever get here has everything to do with your fitness level, your GPP. 
Look at anything West Side. Look at anything Louis Simmons is doing. Why did he invent the fucking sled? Why did he come up with all these program designs? Oh my God, that, that just about will crush a person. The guys that make it at West Side have incredible levels of this right here, of strength endurance. Because to get close to here requires massive amounts of volume. Massive amounts of volume requires a big old fucking tank of strength endurance. Ability to produce consistent force for a sustained amount of time. So what does that mean? Five minute kettlebell snatch test. Huh. Strength endurance. Contrast that with a maximum effort pull up, which we'll talk about here in a second. This is relative strength, but done for a maximum uh, 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 repetition, depending on what kind of condition you're in. I know I did 20 dead hang pull-ups um, last October. My God, I'm pretty sure it took two minutes. You don't think that's endurance? It's freaking a lot of endurance. It's crazy. Do not take this out of the equation. Do not dismiss strength training by going in and doing a rep and sitting down for five fucking minutes and think that you can sustain that kind of practice forever and continue to get stronger. It won't happen. You will fall apart. You will get injured. Your gains will go like this. All right? Flexibility strength. Oh, shit. It's getting even worse. I hate words like flexibility and endurance. I just want to get strong. Flexibility strength. Ability to load and produce force through entire muscle range of motion. Wow, that's a mouthful. Every power lift, I'm the oldest power lifter I know who is not broke. Why? Because I practice full range of motion like a freak. I am a technical Nazi. Everything I do is for a full range of motion. It's as mindful as I can get it, and that's just practicing these main lifts. Then I will follow it with mobility exercises, band work, types of training where I'm not just stretching. I'm not interested in, in flexibility per se. I'm interested in mobility. And also, can I load that muscle through an entire range of motion? Think about Turkish get-ups, windmills, exercises that are really challenging ranges of motion, um, pistols, etc. Ch exercises that are challenging ranges of motion that you ordinarily do not get into and never explore the end range of motion, right? This will help you keep your career in strength moving forward forever and ever and ever. I will add to that. I have seen uh, science, and maybe there's something new I haven't seen. The only science, there's two ways to make the muscle bigger. Hypertrophy, which is the cell, the volume of the cell getting larger because the, the fluid inside, the sarcoplasm is getting bigger, and hyperplasia. Hyperplasia means there's more cells being produced. Now, they can't look at this inside of a human being. They can't do a cross-section and say, yes, hyperplasia is happening. We think it's happening after long-term training, not this short-term hypertrophy cycle, long-term years and years and years of training. The only time that I have seen studies that show hyperplasia were when they were hyper-stretching cat muscles, hyper-stretching them, flexibility, hyper-stretching them. Whether we like it or not, why are our little yogis have little tight, nice-looking muscles? something going on there, okay? We can't dismiss that. We can't not look at it because we don't like the fucking stretch. Anyway, relative strength, incredibly important. What I put here was body weight divided by pounds lifted or repetitions. Once again, pull-ups. I can, I can do a, a dead hang body weight pull-up for a set of eight reps. And a month later, I'm doing 10 reps equals my relative strength just went up. Segway to body, uh, I'm sorry, to relative strength. I believe the CrossFit games should be 100% based on this right there. It would flip everything in CrossFit on its head, 
relative strength, body weight. Think pull-ups, push-ups, dips, etc. Last but not least, speed strength. Guys, strength and speed are best friends. They go together. You can't be slow and strong, even though maximal attempts are slow. Powerlifting is often termed slow strength. God almighty, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. You must be able to move that bar as fast as possible. There must be training in your program design where you are moving that bar as fast as possible. Squatting, pressing, if you're powerlifting, Olympic lifts, you had best figure out how to get that bar accelerated. And in your nervous system, the second you begin to exercise, your body knows exactly what to do. Ability to accelerate force production through entirety, entirety of range of motion. Not just getting it moving, starting strength. Through the entirety of the lift, I am, my ability to accelerate force production. All these lovely things, and there's more. There's, <laughs> there's actually more. You can geek out on this shit all day. These are the ones I find essential, right? With this absolute strength on the horizon. Now, here's the confusing part. How in the fuck do I take all that and put it in a program design? That's what we're going to do the next time you tune in. Thanks for watching, guys.